to the first of many Photoshop tutorials on the new Photoshop CS6. This video we're going to be learning how to use Photoshop to edit video. You're probably thinking Photoshop to edit video. Kind of a weird feature from Adobe but I guess if you're only doing basic video edits, Photoshop could possibly replace the need to purchase a dedicated video editing program like Sony Vegas or After Effects. So here we are in the new Photoshop CS6 and there are a few ways that we can start to edit video here. You could start with a new file and then by choosing the film and video preset and then you could enter in the properties that you want for the project or you can let Photoshop do that. I find the easiest way to uh, import a video is to use mini bridge. So if we take a look at the bottom left of Photoshop you should see this uh, little mini bridge icon there. If you double click it will bring up the mini bridge and if you don't see mini bridge down there just go to file and then click on browse and mini bridge. Sweet, so now that we've got MiniBridge down here, it'll allow us to navigate for our videos much like Windows Explorer but way better. I'm going to select the video files that I want to work with in Photoshop and I'm going to use these cat videos because uh, that's what everyone seems to be editing on the internet these days. So once I've selected all of them, I'm just going to right click one and then choose Photoshop and then I'm just going to choose load files into Photoshop layers. Now this is just going to load all of the videos that we selected right into the same project rather than the individual files loaded into individual projects. It's also going to create a document that is the same size as the videos so that we don't have to give Photoshop all of the details manually to start off with. And now that we've got our videos into Photoshop, we can change to see the timeline to edit them next to the mini ridge icon right there. You should see the timeline. So if you click on the timeline to change the menu and then I'll just change it to the timeline. You can also go to window and then choose that little timeline checkbox there. So now we're going to see a bit more of the timeline. So I'm just going to put my cursor at the top edge of this little timeline here and then drag it up. So as you can see when you add your videos in it like we did, the videos are all stacked on top of each other meaning that we can only see the top one. I want these videos to play one after each other so I'm going to select all of the layers in the timeline and then I'm going to click on the first one and then shift click on the bottom one to select all of the layers in between so then we have our three videos here selected. Then I'm just going to click this little drop down to the right of the name there and then I'm going to choose new video group from clips. Now if I zoom out a bit on the timeline by using this little slider down here you can see that all of our clips now play one after each other. If we go to our layers and then click on the little drop down, there's our group. Now if I were to click play by uh, clicking this little play button here or tapping the space bar, we'd see our videos play, but we'd also hear our audio play. I don't really want the ambient noise of these uh, clips because I'm going to add in some audio later. So for now I could turn off the audio by clicking this little mute button here, but then I wouldn't be able to add in the other audio later. So we need to turn off the audio for each individual clip. Using the arrow at the end of the clip in the timeline, I'll click and then I'll click to the audio icon and here we have a few options for the audio in this clip. I'm going to choose the mute audio checkbox and I'm going to go to the next clip and do the same. And then for the last clip, I'll just do that again. Now that the audio has been muted, if I tap the play button, we can watch the video without hearing the audio and I'll just tap the space bar to stop it from playing. Now I want to change the order of the clips and put the close up first. To do this I'm going to click on it and then drag it to the start like this and then let it go. You'll see that it is uh, placed at the start and all the others are moved. So if I wanted to change the length of any of these clips or the start or end points of these clips I can click and drag at the end or start of a clip. You can see that I have this little preview here to show me where I'm trimming it to. I'm going to trim this one right back to where the cat is looking at the camera and it's in focus because I don't really want that part where it's not looking at it and uh, the camera goes out of focus. Now that you see because I trimmed that clip all the other clips will automatically move to the left to fill up that part that we removed so there are no gaps left in the timeline. I'm also going to make it so these aren't too long so I'm just going to trim these doing the same method as before. Cool, now that I've trimmed those, uh, I'm just going to zoom into the timeline a bit by using that same slider again. And then to add fades and transitions, we'll click this little box here in order to add a fade. 
crossfade, fade with black, fade with white, or fade with color. You'll see below that we have the ability to also change the length of each fade. So at the beginning of the video, I want it to fade in from black. So if I click and drag on this fade with black, and then drag it to the start of the clip, and then just leave that go. Now, if I return to the start of the video by clicking the first frame button, this one here, and then if I click the play button, we can now see that it's fading from black with a duration of one second. Right, to add a crossfade, I'll go back into the fade button, and then I'll drag the crossfade one in between the first and second clip. So for the next one, I'm going to go back to the same icon, and I'm going to try a fade with white. So now that we've got that all done, if I move my current time indicator by double clicking and then just pressing spacebar to play, we can see that it fades to white and then back to the next video. If you take a look at this little blue line above the media in the timeline, it shows us where the preview has been built for that area. Where there isn't a blue line, that shows us where there isn't a preview built. If I want to preview the entire project, I'll return back to the beginning and then click the play button. The first time that Photoshop renders a part of the video, it may be slower than normal depending on your computer's hardware. As you can see here in the red, the frame rate has reduced from 29.97 in order to render the preview. Once that preview has been rendered, as long as we don't make any changes, we'll be able to preview that at its full frame rate with no lag. Cool, so that's pretty much it for our video. Let's get on to adding some audio. I'm going to click this little audio note on the audio track and then choose Add Audio and just choose the audio and then hit open. Now if I zoom out of the timeline you can see that this audio is far too long so I need to trim it and there's looking pretty good. So I'll just zoom back in using the slider again. Now if I want to add a fade out on this audio if I click the little arrow at the end and then increase the fade out to about three seconds and now if we play this we can hear that the audio fades out for the last three seconds. Now if I want to preview the full video, I'll click the first frame button, and then click play. Now that we've made all the changes that I need to, I'll render the video. To do this, you can click the little arrow here on the timeline, or you can go up to File, Export, Render Video. And here we can name our project, so I'm just going to call this one Cats, and then you can select where you want it to render at. And then after we've chosen our format, we can choose a wide range of different presets. Say I want to add this video to YouTube, which I do because it's a cat video, I can choose the YouTube preset and then all the details there will be filled in automatically. Okay, once you've done, you can just click render and then Photoshop will render out your video. I'm just going to cancel the render for the sake of this tutorial's length, but there's one last thing that I want to talk you through. And this is just because you have rendered the video doesn't mean that you've saved it. If we want to make any additional changes later, we need to save it as a Photoshop document. So this time let's go up to File, Save As, and make sure that the Photoshop PSD format has been chosen, give it a name, and then hit Save. Now just like most video editing programs if you've used any, um, when you save your project file, it doesn't include all of the videos that you've edited in it. So if you want to further edit later, you'll want to uh, keep the original files in the same location so Photoshop can find them. And guys, that's it for this tutorial. Be sure to click the like button below if you've followed along, add it to your favorites, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. As always, if you want to see more videos like this, including adding cool special effects to your videos in Photoshop, be sure to check out the show, and be sure to click subscribe. Thanks for watching.